I have family now. This is family, an incredible entrepreneur, a true underdog, Jason Waller, founding CEO of Power Home Solar and host of the True Underdog Podcast. Welcome to the playbook, my brother. How are you? I am. I'm excited to be here with you, baby. How you doing? Bam! It's like Batman and Robin. It's so bam, wop, bam, pop. Anyway, I want to get to the nitty gritty because you are one of my favorite entrepreneurs of all time. I've waited until your brand was big enough so that you could truly take advantage of the frequency and strength of your signal, that uh, evolving brand that you have that goes beyond just being an entrepreneur. But it comes from a spirit of excellence, as we were talking about. You're a Barry Sanders fan. I'm a Barry Sanders fan. But it really stems from a desire that I found in you when I first met you. And that desire is that you must be what you can be. You know, all of the great people that come from places like Detroit, Michigan, or come from Akron, Ohio, or Alabama, they have a desire that they must be what they can be. At what age did you realize that you weren't going to listen to other people, that you must be what you can be? I think there were two pivotal times. I think one was when I was 14 and my dad worked at AT AT&T in a corning plant building phone wire and they were shutting the plant down in Arizona and he was having to move to North Carolina and his friend opened a video store video power store was called back before blockbuster I mean these were cool right remember renting the movies every Tuesday (laughs) so his friend had this successful business that that he was building with multiple stores and he offered my dad he said look Bill stay here I'll open you up a sub shop next door we can open up your wife Sherry a cake bakery on the other side the smells can come in you've got the video store you've got the bakery you've got the subs it's a good mix and I remember watching my dad in the living room say no I can't I've got two kids with asthma talking about my brother and sister and I've got 12 more years till I'm done and all of those things and and at 14 it didn't really hit but I remember seeing him say no to that. And it was, all right, no big deal. Well, fast forward, we moved to North Carolina, moved into a trailer park. Nothing wrong with that, but that's where we lived. We couldn't afford a real house. And I was getting made fun of at school. I was helping my dad deliver papers at night. So he's working, you know, second shift when he gets home at 1130, we're delivering papers from one to three in the morning. Then I'm going to school. I watched him and my mom struggle. And so I told myself around 15, 16, if a horse ever comes by, I'm jumping on. I'm not going to let anybody tell me I can't. I'm going to risk everything. I'm going to try to take chances and do something bigger and better and not work in corporate America or be stuck and attached to something I don't want to do. Wow. And, you know, that idea of risking everything is not something that you ever let go of. A lot of people hit a level of success like you. You've been the entrepreneur of the year for Ernst & Young. I mean, the list goes on and on. A lot of people, you know, may have taken a step back uh, and not risked everything, but you continually, even to this day, you keep investing in yourself. I don't call it sacrifice. You have a true belief, a true underdog belief, like P.T. Barnum, like Carl Fisher, some of my favorite entrepreneurs of all time, like Richard Branson, by the way, uh, willing to risk it all, to invest it all in themselves. Do you ever get afraid that man, I, I've already, I have everything I ever dreamed of, you know, why am I doing this? Yeah, I think a couple of times I've been afraid, you know, I, I've been blessed to be around people that I can always try to be a sponge and learn from. I mean, I truly have been around people where I can always pick their brain and I, I'm never bigger than the moment to where I think I know everything. I, you know, I have that ability to say, I don't know everything and how can I learn more? And so that's really helped me along the way. But I remember the end of 15, my first year in Power Home Solar, we were going to have to close the doors. We only had about 35 employees at the time. And we lost over a million dollars that year. I sold my house on the lake. My wife gave me the stink eye. My kids were mad. Like we're moving. We downsized the house and had to buy a smaller house cash where my, my oldest daughter can finish her senior year. And I invested all of that money back into Power Home Solar. And 22 months, I didn't get a paycheck. And I remember... At that time, I was scared because I was debating, David, the night before I really like flipped the switch of I've got to just change everything of am I going to close down? And my business partner, Kevin's like, we need to close it down. And I'm like, I just I couldn't do it. I couldn't quit. I couldn't quit on the people, whether I have one employee or 5000 employees. I couldn't let them down. 
And I love pressure, but it, it spooks me. And if I'm not scared and if I'm not a little uncomfortable, then I, then I can't grow. If I'm just sitting stagnant, I'm not going to grow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fall off and get bored. And so that challenge, really, I came in, cleaned house, started doing a lot more things myself. And I created this 80-20 rule where I eliminate or force the directors to eliminate or put on a performance plan 20% of our staff every month. So they draw the line. And if you're in the bottom 20%, you're going to, you have to find a way to get out of that or you got to get replaced the next month. And that has really helped propel us to grow because we're always getting better and we're always pushing those KPIs higher. But I learned that through experience and, and, and fear to where I had no choice. Everything was on the line. So I was the one doing the calls. I was the one doing the sales. I was the one filling out the permit forms, anything I can do. And I've done it before in other companies. I had to get back to the basics. And those basics, uh, one of the things that we can do is lie to ourselves. Um, And I really admire one thing because, you know, I did lose everything uh, over a hundred million dollars. And part of the reason is that philosophy of taking care of everybody else. Uh, And I was so worried about all of these employees, the difference between I've tried to analyze, you know, your journey and mine together is that I knew I was in a failing business and I kept investing in it just to save everyone's job. And in the end, you know, I lost everything. They had no jobs. They blamed me anyway. They didn't like me, hated me, whatever it was. And I learned that valuable lesson, that dummy tax that, you know, number one, you got to know your timing and risk tolerance Two, You got to truly believe in what you're doing. You can't just do it for everyone else. You have to personally, if you're going to invest in yourself, as they say, risk everything, then you better be like P.T. Barnum, Carl Fisher, and Jason Waller. You know your business is going to succeed and you're going to do what it takes. I didn't know that. I thought I had you know, a, a business that wasn't in the right place, but I had made so many representations. My ego was so deeply ingrained in the business and identified and defined myself by it that I couldn't just tell people, hey, we're closing the doors. This is a bad idea. Let me figure things out. And you'll be a participant in my new idea, something that's much better than this. How do you evaluate, you know, when you're risking everything? Because you have a faith in that, you know, solar business. You have a faith in your podcast. You have faith in yourself uh, that, you know, I'm going to sell that house, downgrade, get the stink eye, you know, and have the shame. Uh, but go ahead. And when they laugh at me, scoff at me, make fun of me, I will apl- be applauded someday. How did you know that the business would accelerate and, and win? Well, I, I believed in myself and I believed that that I believed in the, the mission of what solar is about and what we were doing. And it was really just getting through the hard times. If if it were a business and, you know, we were failing in the security business and we sold the business and I got into it was successful, but it was on its way down. You know, it was to a point where everybody was in that business. And I said, "Ah, that's probably not good for us. So we sold it and the employees got to stay. And I got into the solar business. And when I did that, I had enough money. I didn't have to pay myself, but then I gave all the money back and sold my house and put it in there. And when I, it was partly to save the employees that tried, you know, employees that sacrifice everything. and, And it's more than just a job to them. It's not just a paycheck. They're there because they believe in you. Those are the ones I'm fighting for, right? That's the true underdog mentality. But I'm also fighting for myself and my family. My back's against the wall. I got nothing left. Everything I made in the other companies is in this one. Now I'm selling myself, you know, my house to put back in there is in this business. I felt like I didn't have a choice and I didn't schedule a plan B. You know, you hear a lot of other guys talk, motivational guys. I think it's Andy Frisella always says, don't have a plan B. It's funny. That's I, at that moment, I was like, I don't have a plan B. This is my plan and I've got to go all in. And if I'm going to go all out, I don't want to have regret that I didn't give it 110%. If I gave it 110% and I failed, I could live with that because, hey, I gave it my all. I can't feel guilty. I, I tried. But if I just would have quit early and just said, oh, it's a little too hard and I'm not sure, I still had hope. I still had fire. I still saw the light because I believed in the mission and I saw the potential. I just had to get through all of the obstacles to get there. You have so many common denominators with successful people, your philosophy of motivation and inspiration, the process of being an entrepreneur, thinking big, asking big. What's the common denominator? You know, you have this extraordinary podcast, the True Underdog Podcast, and you get to interview and be with the greatest 
celebrities, athletes, entertainers, billionaires, millionaires, entrepreneurs. What's the common denominator that you see from all the extraordinary people that you have surrounded yourself with? Well, I think they have confidence in themselves. They don't, they're not egotistical. They're not arrogant. They, they have confidence in themselves. And I think that I, I have a motto. I, I put it in my book, scared money, don't make money. When people are willing to bet on themselves, that's what I see in real entrepreneurs or successful people that I brought on the show. And, you know, I think also the, the ability to not quit, to give it 110%. It's so easy to be like a sheep and just be normal. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with normal, but it's so easy to take that easy path. It's so much harder to not. And those that really are leading the charge are the lions and that are doing bigger things and bringing people along, which is great. They don't quit. They find a way to get it done. And even if it fails, it's not really failing. You're learning because you gave it your all and you've just got to bounce back. And I think those are the two biggest things is is their ability to not want to quit and their ability to really have the confidence to bet on themselves and get other people to believe in them. Because if you don't believe in yourself, you can't get other people to believe. In you. I truly believe that. And you, you're a poster child for Dave Meltzer's definition of success, which is enjoying the consistent, everyday, persistent, without quit, pursuit of your own potential. You know, knowing what you don't know, pursuing your own potential. To, to you, what do you feel is the skill set that allows you to enjoy the consistent, persistent? It's one thing to be persistent, but to be miserable or to be consistent and be miserable or to pursue something that you don't want or other people want for you. But what is it like to enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential? It makes you enjoy life a little bit more and it's a, it's your why. And I think, you know, being around people like yourself, David, that can coach me or I learn from, and I see how excited you get about helping people. And then I get excited about helping people too. I mean, anytime I can empower and help or serve people that you can't buy that, you know, I could, you buy a jet, you buy a car. It doesn't matter. I don't chase money. You mentioned it earlier. You know, what does it feel like when you, there's nothing left to buy that you can get depressed. A lot of successful people, when they bought everything, they get depressed. I try to stay focused. Yep. You, you, you say you've been there. So, yeah. but when you stay positive and you're helping people, there's so many people in the world to help. You're never going to run out of doing that and doing a podcast, writing a book, coaching people, you know, inspiring people, sharing your story, being relatable to people really is the game changer. And any that, that I love that that's infectious. My favorite part of, of running power, uh, power home solar being the CEO and founder is doing our sales meetings and our install meetings where I have three, 400 people that my whole goal is to inspire them to tear the walls down and go out there and build that movement together. And I have to do it every single month and I get jacked. And when I walk in there, I have no idea what I'm going to talk about, but it comes from the heart and it's natural. And I try, I deliver every time I feel like where they are jacked and they're ready to go. So we're all have the same culture and the same momentum and the same mission. And, and I, I try to do that on the podcast. I try to do that on the show with you. I, tr I try to just, Keep it real, keep it honest, but also be relatable and inspire people. Because if you just help one person, you change, you change the world. Imagine if you can help more. You nailed it. And you are a celebrity host of Two Minute Drill, which June 18th, we've invited you out. We have our launch party. It's on Amazon Prime Video. It's an hour long, uh, unbelievable uh series that we have season two is starting starring jason waller two minute drill check it out on bloomberg tv and amazon and now you're also going to be filming office hours where you're going to be sharing your wisdom again on amazon prime and bloomberg uh with the greatest celebrities athletes entertainers billionaires millionaires everyone from deepak Chopra to Saad guru to danica patrick and marshall falk uh it's incredible ryan Serhant, you know ed milet Andy Purcell, it's going to be incredible, and I can't wait to see your inquisitive nature. Now, writing your book, you got the podcast, the books, the TV shows, um, literally a, a billion dollar business. Um, so many things that you're dealing with, but you're the king of acronyms. You know, whether it's BAM or WAP or AGB, which is my favorite, is um, you know, looking over the book that you're writing. I love AGB and the three categories of people. Uh, that correspond with AGB. So I was hoping you could explain what AGB is and the three categories of people. Absolutely. So AGB is always getting better and it's challenge yourself. Like true story. I probably not the best moment in my life, but we were out to dinner for my son's birthday yesterday. And, and 
my wife goes, you know, she said something. She looks great. She was all dolled up. She's hot. And I said, <laughs> yeah, I, I would. She's like, well, what would you rate me? I said, I give you a nine. A nine. Why would you give me a nine? I said, well, nothing's perfect. If I gave you a 10, you have nothing to strive for. She's like, I'm not a business venture. I'm your wife. I said, I understand. That's what she said. I said, I understand. But I truly believe that I don't, wouldn't want you to tell me a, I'm a 10 because then I'm done growing. Well, then you know she's a liar. Right. Well, <laughs> well that day, hey, by the way, that too. <laughs> that also. But but to say, but to say you're a 10. So we had that conversation, but it goes back to AGB. Nothing's perfect. You know, I've got investors looking at our company. We're trying to maybe take the company public. And they're like, where would you rank your departments a 10? I said, nothing's a 10. We have a bunch of nines and some sixes and some sevens. But if it's a 10, then we're done growing and that's not going to happen. So we're always a nine. And I think AGB is about getting 1% better every day. And if you do that every day, you're 7% better at the end of the week. And after a year, you're 365% better. That's AGB. The three categories of people that I believe in. It's not just the category of who they are. It's where they sit, is my belief, right? And I think everybody, I know me, I've been in all three categories and category one is your dreamers, your motivators, your coaches, those who love to be coached, those that love success, those that coach people, your entrepreneurs, anybody that feels positive energy and wants to be around other positive people to do great things. You don't have to be rich or famous to be in that category. You just got to be enjoying life and successful internally. That's category one. We've, we've been there. I'm, I feel like I'm there right now. Category two is the intimidated. You think of Homer Simpson, things get a little weird. He backs into the bushes. That's what happens to a lot of friends or family or peers that when you start to do big things, they get intimidated and they feel like you're outgrowing them and they separate themselves from you. They're not haters. They're not, they're not in the other category yet, but they're in that intimidated feeling. I've been there where I've been around people and I'm intimidated like, whoa, and you got to regroup. People are just people. You don't need to feel intimidated. You know, everybody has something that they can bring to the table in a relationship or something. So you can't feel less than any time. And a lot of us get stuck in that intimidated feeling. We close off and then we lose relationships with people. And I know I've lost a lot of friends along the way and not because they didn't like me. They just felt intimidated because I was growing. I'm still the same person. And I hate that because we lose relationships. Category three, which I've been in and I don't like to be in, but I've been there, are the haters. The complainers, the ones who make excuses, the one that blame, you know, my failures because of their success and vice versa. Like those are the people you want to get out of that category. And I live off those people because the more that they say I can't, I've had family, I've had friends, I've had peers. I mean, I'm telling you, you're not going to be able to do it. You can't open a business. You didn't finish high school. You didn't go to college. You're a loser. You had all these things. I don't purposely change my map for them, but I use that as fuel to put into my vehicle. As I'm going, I just make sure that, hey, get your popcorn ready, get your Pepsi, get your straw. I'm going to put on a show. You watch me and I'll watch me and I can continue to grow. And I feel like when they're in category three, it's hard to get them out of there. And there's nothing better than getting them out of there to become a fan or to work for you to do things like that. And it is possible because we've all been in category three, I believe as well. But the goal is to try to stay in category one and try to never get to category three. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's amazing. I'm looking at your journey, you know, from the nineties, you know, from the trailer park in the nineties to home security to 2006 for Verizon uh, in the IS side of things till, you know, then you built your own built, built business by taking all that situational knowledge and experience and making yourself, an overnight success after all those years, right? And people don't see, that's why I started way back in the 90s, because here we are in 2021, you know, in 2015, you start, you get, you lost a million dollars and then you'd go and double down, right? And by then, the year of 2017, you got 40 million in sales. Then the next year, 105 million in sales, then 185 million in sales. And then here we go to the hockey stick, 330 million in sales during COVID and the pandemic. And we'll and do 750 million this year. That's the plan. Exactly. And that takes one thing. It takes faith. And I've seen your commercials. I've seen you on my TV shows. I've seen you on the podcast. I've read your book. You're a man of faith. I want to finish off with understanding what that means to you because people use that ubiquitous word faith in a variety of ways. When I tell people, hey, you got to meet Jason Waller, you got to go on the True Underdog podcast, you got to watch him on TV and see what he does and do business with him because he epitomizes a man of faith. What does that mean to you? 
Well, first of all, I'm, I'm honored that you would say that and, and humbled that you would say that. But I, I think that it means that I, I believe in something bigger than myself. I believe in a mission. I, I mean, I, I'm a man of, of faith in God. I believe in God and I believe he gives us attributes. It's our job to figure out what those gifts are, those attributes are and utilize them and to help other people but I believe in something bigger of the mission. And if I can make a difference in the world and I can make my kids better people and I can make my peers better people and the employees better people and anybody that I can touch just to be better in this world, the world's already hard. You know, the world already has evil. And just because someone's having a bad month and they're being hateful doesn't make them evil. They're just being hateful. And we can't let that destroy us. And so I think we need more inspiration and more motivation out there. And we got to have faith in, in good people do good things and good things happen to them. And we all go through bumps and, you know, life is, is peaks and valleys and, you know, we're going to hit those bumps. We just got to deal with them and, and how we recover from them is important. I always think of the Rocky movie. So it's not how hard you punch. It's how hard you get punched and you get up. That's so true in life. Like that's where we're really defined when things are tough and we can get through that. That's when people want to rally together and be a part of something great. And it's unfortunate, even in our country, sometimes like 9-11 had to happen and then our country bonded together. Like those are the things that bring our country together and, and bring people together is bad things. And that's unfortunate. That's the way it works. And so when you're going through something tough and you can get everyone to rally around you, whether it's personally or, or in, you know, in business, I think having that faith of everybody together trying to take it to the next level is important. And you do it so well, you know, you use pain, mistakes, failures, setbacks as indicators that you have a better place, a better position and a better situation to be in. You are the poster child for success, the enjoyment of the consistent, persistent pursuit of his potential. I hope you take away the great lessons from Jason Waller, the CEO of Power Home Solar, host of the True Underdog Podcast, the star of the Two Minute Drill and Office Hours on Amazon Prime Video and Bloomberg TV. He does so many other things, including his new book coming out. So we'll have to have you back on to discuss that. Thank you so much for empowering others to empower others to be happy, to make more money, help more people and have more fun. Jason Waller, I don't know what I did in my past lives or this lives to attract you into my life, but I just want to thank you before we leave. <laughs> 